Jay Sauter would grow up in a racing household led by his father Jim Sauter, a Midwest racing legend who competed in NASCAR himself, making his initial national touring starts in 1980 by entering a handful of races in the American Speed Association and ARCO on tracks in his native Wisconsin. His first notable success would come in ASA, where he would take home the checkers at Berlin Raceway in 1992 and would eventually compile three top five points finishes. Capturing the attention of Team Sabco and later Richard Childress Racing, Sauter would get the opportunity to make eight starts in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series in 1996. Compiling two top five and five top ten finishes in these starts, he would sign on with Childress to take over the number three truck full-time for 1997 after Mike Skinner would vacate the seat for a Cup Series ride. Running with the team for three full-time seasons, he would compile four race victories and earn three top ten and two top five points finishes. He would take the opportunity to move up to the Bush Grand National Series to pilot the number 43 Chevrolet for Curb Agashanian Performance Group for the 2000 season. By the time teams pulled into Memphis Motorsports Park in October of 2001, he had made 60 starts in the series up to that point, having earned two top five and 14 top ten finishes. The starting lineup would be set by points after Friday's qualifying session would be canceled due to rain. As a result, Sauter would roll off in 22nd place when the field would take the green. Mario Hernandez would spin in turn four, slowing the event for the first time on lap five. Sauter would line up in the 21st position when the action resumed on lap nine. The race would once again slow on lap 21 after Hernandez would this time collect Clay Rogers after some help from Elton Sawyer. Sauter would remain in 21st for the lap 27 restart. He would make his way up to 19th before the third caution of the day would come out on lap 31 after Stedman Marlin and Clay Dale tangled in turn four. The race would go back under green on lap 37. Sauter would make a surge forward over this run. Meanwhile, this battle taking place, middle of the field for 16th and 17th spot on the screen. On the move, the 43 of Jay Sauter, another of the ongoing list of racing Sauters out of Nacida, Wisconsin. The 27 car, Jamie McMurray, who made his Bush Series debut here a year ago. He would make his way up to 15th before Stan Barrett would crash in turn two on lap 61, bringing out the fourth yellow of the day. Pitting under the caution with the leaders, Sauter would make his way off in 17th, where he would line up for the lap 68 restart. Debris on the track would quickly slow the event once more on lap 75. The leaders would stay out and the action would resume on lap 80. Sauter's car would really hook up on this run. Further back, you've got Grubb in that yellow and blue machine, the 37. Right behind him in the 11th spot, the 33. Tony Range. 43, 17, everybody in line. Nobody making a move yet. Jay Sauter in that 43. Clay Rogers. He would make his way up to 12th place before Hank Parker Jr. and Scott Hansen would tangle in turn three on lap 92, bringing out the sixth caution of the day. The race would go back under green on lap 107. He would make his way up into the top 10 over this run, climbing as high as 9th before suffering a left rear flat in a stack-up exiting turn 4. The resulting debris, as well as debris off of Elton Sawyer's car, would bring out the 7th caution of the day on lap 132. So Elton Sawyer now back to 26th position. He'll be losing more spots and problems now for Jay Sauter as the left rear is gone. So S Sawyer right there losing the left front. Jay Sauter losing the rear on the 43 car. We've got caution on the speedway now. Caution on the speedway from debris that has come off both of the Elton Sawyer car and the car of Jay Sauter. He would restart from 26th, one lap down, on lap 142. Randy Tolsma would spin in turns three and four following Jeff Bodine's engine failure on lap 157, bringing out the eighth yellow. Staying out under the caution, Sauter would restart from 21st on lap 166, now finding himself back on the lead lap. The green flag run would be short-lived, as Mario Hernandez would finally finish it off, crashing with Mark Voigt in turn three on lap 169 and slowing the event for the ninth time. Restarting from 18th on lap 175, Sauter would move forward over the next run. That's for 14th position. 
Number 43 is also in the mix, Sauter. Remember, if you're just tuning in, we've got more Sauters than you could shake a stick at. That is Jay Sauter in the 43. He's running right behind these two. And Johnny running just a second out of the lead up front in third. This battle here is six and eight tenth seconds behind the leader, Jeff Green. He's not done with the short tracks yet. No, he's got another day. He's just getting warmed up, up yeah. today. He's just getting warm. Just getting going. Here comes Jay Sauter there. Now with Greg Biffle. 14th, 15th, 16th. Making his way up to 12th place before the 10th and final caution of the day would come out for debris on lap 207. While the leaders pitted, Sauter would stay out, lining up in fourth for the lap 215 restart. He would move up to third on lap 219 after Tony Raines received a black flag. And you see the smoke coming from him as he enters, enters the pits there. To your left, there he is. He was being black flagged by NASCAR. After getting around Jason Keller for second, he would set his sights on leader Randy LaJoy. Welcome back, everybody. The story is very simple. Randy LaJoy has the race lead. But while you were away watching some messages, Everybody else has been closing in to the tune of a couple of seconds. Everyone is catching Randy LaJoy. The 43 of Jay Sauter is catching him. But the guy we got to keep an eye on now is the 43 car of Jay Sauter. Right. He has closed in right up on the rear deck of the leader, Randy LaJoy. Remember, Sauter's got to cut a tire down, lost a lap earlier on. Four wins in the truck series. This is a 67 Bush Series start for Jay Sauter. Only had six top tens this season. And right here, he's running nose to tail for the race lead in Memphis. You know, through the early part of the program, we talked about his brother Johnny Sauter. Right. Running up front. Now here at the closing stages, older brother Jay is the guy with the spotlight's on. Wow, look at Sauter close up in the middle of the corner there. He is way quicker than LaJoy, right through the center of the turn. Jay Sauter finished ninth here a couple of, excuse me, a year ago. After running him down, Sauter would make his move, overtaking the lead with 14 laps remaining. Here goes the battle for the lead. Jay Sauter is there. Washes up the racetrack just a little bit, makes slight contact. You see the joint pay him back just a little bit right there. But Jay Sauter has the lead. So Sauter takes over the lead at lap 238. There's the first and second spots. Jay Sauter. And Randy LaJoy. Sauter has no wins in Bush Series competition. Best finish. Fourth place. Ralph, could be a heck of a story here. It's going to be, Eli. The gentleman in the blue hat standing just to the right of Kerry Agajanian. That's Frankie Kerr. Now, this gentleman, for those folks that have watched a lot of sprint car racing over the years, is one of the fastest ever to run a wing sprint car. Frankie's a new member to this team, and he's one of the few people here who's ever raced on this racetrack when it was covered in dirt. This is just one of the improvements that have been made to this curve Agajanian team, bringing in more knowledge that's obviously paying off for Jay Sauter here today. He finished third at Texas back in March of this year. Sauter did. Three tires versus old tires there. That's, that's the difference. Now a half second and six laps to go. The 43 Jay Sauter. A longtime series champion, Green. And the 2000 Bush Series Rookie of the Year, Sauter. Meanwhile, up front, here goes Green trying to bump his way to the lead. Boy, look at the bike Jeff gets up off the corner. The Jay is able to get through the turns just fast enough. To and try here to hold goes Green trying to power around to the outside. And don't forget LaJoy lurking in third. It's the second year Bush Series campaigner, Sauter, and the former Series champion Green. Trying hard to fight off a strong charge from Jeff Green, the two would make significant contact on the backstretch with two laps remaining, allowing LaJoy to get back by. Green 
shoves it, and the inside is open for LaJoy. Here comes Randy LaJoy coming to the white flag. LaJoy with that old tire. Sauter would ultimately cross the line in fourth place. Ralph, how much finger pointing is going on downstairs right now? Well, right now they've kind of cooled down a little bit, but I know the adrenaline is still pumping through Jay Sauter's veins. I can see the hands are still shaking down here holding the water. Jay, what happened in those closing laps? Well, just both of us were going for the win. You know, uh, we're hungry for a win. I didn't come to finish second today, I'm doing everything I could to hold Jeff Green back. Uh, we got together. I ended up fourth. He ended up second. Uh, just real proud of this race team did today. You know, Mike Kerb, Kerry Agajanian. Uh, we raced today for the New York City uh, Police and Firefighters, the Widows and Orphans Funds. Those people gave their lives selflessly, you know, to protect other people, and we're real proud of them. Uh, real proud of the country, too. Everybody needs to stand behind President Bush. Is this just good, hard, short track racing, or is there more to it than that? No, it's just good, hard racing. I mean, uh, like I said, I'm hungry. I haven't won in two years, and I was doing everything I could to try to hold on to the win. And Jeff and I got together. He finished second. I finished fourth. We'll just get on to the next one. Despite the strong run, he would be released by the team the following week. After lining up rides with multiple team owners, including Ed Renzi, Richard Childress, Charlie Henderson, and Keith Duesenberg, he would go on to make 69 more starts in the series, collecting eight further top 10 finishes and an additional top five at Nashville Super Speedway in 2002. A winner in multiple national touring series, including multiple victories in NASCAR's truck series, Jay Sauter was a formidable talent behind the wheel, and on one fall afternoon in late 2001, he nearly etched his name into the history books.